All right, folks, so we're going to do a quick video on this radio. It's the Quan Shang. I think that's how you say that. This is the uh, UV-R50. It's a dual band um, ham held radio. It does two meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is I had seen some other reviews on this and I seen some posts on some uh, ham radio forums where people were saying, hey, this is a $25 dual band radio. It's uh, pretty good. It's got great receive. Um, it's a potential, um, what's well, a competitor to the Baofeng radios, Chinese cheap handheld radios. Um, priced at $25, puts it right in that market. And a lot of people are saying that this is the next big thing. It's going to be the Baofeng killer. Um, I couldn't disagree more. This uh, radio, uh, in my opinion, is, is a piece of crap. So we got that out of the way. You don't really have to watch the rest of the video. <laughs> but if you want to, uh, you know, obviously that's cool and encouraged. Um, I just don't like it, and there's some reasons why, and we're going to cover those as we go through. So uh, why don't you hold on, and uh, we'll get started. So the Quan Chang came to me um, packaged pretty well in this box that did get a little bit mangled in transit. Um, it has both English and, uh, and I guess this is Chinese writing, listen as face-to-face. -face. Um, up here, I do believe it says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel but I'm not 100% sure, I'm a little rusty on my Chinese. Um, we take a look at this, I'm not gonna really do an unboxing because I've already unboxed it and everything's missing. So let's come back and we'll take a look at what it ships with. Okay, obviously it comes with a radio and it comes with an antenna that is very Baofeng-esque. It's not branded Baofeng. Um, and just because an antenna looks like another antenna doesn't mean it's the same antenna. It comes with a battery that, uh, you have a little latch here to get it on and off. And let's take a look at that. So if you take a look at this, it says it's 1600 milliamp uh, hours. I'm not sure. It says DC 7.2 volts. That makes sense. Do not disassemble. Do not dispose in fire. Do not change or charge battery in hazardous conditions. And then there's QSFJ.com, which I believe is the Quan Chang website. Um, I do want to say real quick that uh, you can't program this radio with Chirp. I did set it up on Chirp and tried to use the UV5R drivers, and it just didn't work. I figured it would because the radios are so similar. So you have to go to that website and download um, some pretty bad Chinese software. I'm not gonna review the Chinese programming software. It's a million times more difficult than, um, than Chirp and it's really not worth using. Um, I will say that you can use the Baofeng programming cable uh, to program this radio. Uh, let's just take a quick look at that. The radio does have some interfaces here and uh, it looks just like the Baofeng's. But if you look at that, it's off center, which is kind of poor quality and workmanship, which is one of the reasons I don't like it. I was also able to use the BTEC APRS cable and um, do APRS with this radio, so that is, you know, something positive for it. Um, if you take a look at the back of the radio, there's a sticker on there, and it says it's uh, four watts on high, one watt on low. Its frequency range is 136 through 174 megahertz, and then 400 through 520, and then we got a serial number. Also, these feel cheap. These are the contacts for the radio. It just feels cheap. The radio ships with a docking station, uh, which is what you would expect. Um, I wish these radios were programmable, I'm sorry, chargeable through an interface on the radio itself so you wouldn't have to lug this around in an AC to DC converter or some other kind of charging mechanism. But uh, it seems to work reasonably well. It does feel pretty hollow, pretty cheap. LED on this part of the charger that doesn't do anything. Red when charging, green when done, very simple comes with a pocket clip. Uh, I never carried it around that much, so I never took that out of the package. And it comes with a, an ear and a mic. <clears throat> I'm sorry, an earpiece and a mic. Um, so you can use Vox and, and things like that. You can also control it from a button on here, I believe. But I did not test this, and we are not going to look at it. All right, taking a look at this uh, user's manual. You can see it has 128 channels. It's PC programmable if you want to download some pretty bad software. DTMF function, which is a good thing, built-in Vox, dual watch operation, and it comes with a, a cloning cable, or it's, I'm sorry, it's cable clonable. Um, <clears throat> and we talked about that a little bit already. Let's go ahead and take a look. Thank you for your purchase of this radio. They say all kinds of nice things for buying it. Uh, one thing is you're going to need to have x-ray vision to read this. Um, <laughs> or at least a pair of reading glasses, um, especially at my age. When you go through it, this radio operates almost exactly like a uh, like a Baofeng. You can see here it's, we've got a fast menu operation mode. Um, when you program it from the keypad, uh, you really just do it like you would a Baofeng. You type in, you go to frequency mode, you type in your frequency, um, you set a PL, you set your offset, you pick a channel to save it in, and then you go ahead and you save. 
um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, if you're used to programming Baofeng radios, if you're not, it's a little bit tedious and a little bit of a pain in the butt. Let's go ahead and see if I can figure out how to put this thing together. Okay, we snapped the the, uh, the battery on, and this is one of the things that I don't like about this radio. Hear that? This battery um, is loose. It doesn't firmly attach to the radio. And I guess this is where the Balfang comparisons are going to start. This one is on here, snug as a bug. Um, I like that. It feels sturdy. Every time I pick this thing up, I feel like it's going to fall apart. And it just feels loose in my hand, and it feels like crap. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, since we have the Balfang out, let's go ahead and sit these two things side by side and see if I can focus. Balfang's a little bit shorter. Uh, they're about the same width and about the same thickness. The keypad on the Balfang is a little crowded. It's a little tight. You can hear that there is a tactile sensation when you push those buttons. There is on this radio, and I actually like the button feel on the Quan Shang better. I like that there's more space in the keypad panel, and I also like that the zero is underneath the eight as opposed to the right of the six, like on the Balfang. This seems like a more natural uh, layout to me. I always mess this one up. Anyhow, <clears throat> that said, you have your uh, VFO uh, memory mode buttons, you have your band buttons, um, and then you have your channel selection or your or, or your A to B. Um, the Quan Chang does have a much nicer button layout and I like the button feel better. Okay, so when you turn this thing on, even the voice sounds like the voice on the Balfang. Um, I was convinced, like I said earlier, when I tried to program this using the Balfang drivers, that this was just a repackaged Balfang, but it's not. It's a little bit different. Um, anyhow, that said, let's go ahead into menu mode. And as you step through the menu, it is exact same menu as a Balfang. I didn't see anything different. Um, I guess it really shouldn't be a surprise. So there's really no difference there. Um, I'm not going to go through all the menu settings. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there on the Balfang memory settings. And uh, if you are interested in this radio and you do have any questions, you, you can post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, quickly, I just wanted to take a look at the screen displays of these two radios. Um, when you take a look at this radio, the screen is very vibrant and bright. When you take a look at the Balfang, it is a little bit more difficult to read. So that's a plus one for Quan Shang. One of the other things that I wanted to mention is, is that there are a variety of parts that are available for the Balfang radios, and in most, of, in most cases they're interchangeable. You have battery eliminators, USB chargers, you have uh, larger batteries uh, for higher capacity. Um, there's mounting options for these. Uh, there's a company that makes these things that you can snap the radios into uh, when you mount them into your car, for example. Um, there's not a, as big of a market for uh, aftermarket accessories for the Quan Shang. That doesn't mean that there won't be, it just means that there isn't for right now. One of the things I, I, I want to bring up is, is that right now, um, I can post a link below, you can actually pick up a UV5R. This is UV5RE, so it's a newer model, but you can pick up the old original UV5R off of Amazon shipped for $19.95 right now. This one's going to set you back about $24.95. Not a big difference, but uh, I really just don't see the uh, the reason to go with this radio. Okay, we are going to test the SWR rating that comes with this uh, antenna, or that you get with this antenna, and we are going to take a look at the power output on the Quan Chang. So let's go ahead and hook this up. This is called the Nisei SWR and Power Meter RS40 model. Let me get this set up, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, as you can see, this is a very sophisticated piece of equipment that required a lot of adapters to make it work. Um, I'm going to get some comments probably from people saying, all oh, those adapters are messing with your reading, bro. Um, and you're probably right a little bit, but uh, this is what we got and this is what we're going to work with. So um, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my meter is set to 15 watts uh, at peak and I want to make sure that we're testing power first. Let me go into um, the menu here menu. and then I can press 2 to go to text power. So we're on high, which should be 4 watts. Um, let's go ahead and exit. And then we are on a hailing frequency, the two meter uh, US calling frequency. Let's go ahead and see what our power rating is. And we got up to four. Let's go ahead and switch our power to low and see what we get. Okay, let's go ahead and test. And that looked to be just below one watt. 
Let's go ahead and test the SWR now. We switch the function of our meter. Okay, we have our power set to high. Let's go ahead and exit. And let's go ahead and test the SWR. The needle barely moves, and that's a good thing. Now let's go ahead and test on low. Oops. Oh, there we are, run low. And the needle barely moves. <clears throat> so that said, the the radio has about the uh, power output that it claims and the antenna doesn't generate a lot of SWR. I didn't expect it would for such low power frequencies, but uh, overall, that's a good thing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is a, um, is a test of how well this radio receives and we're gonna compare that to the Balfang UV5R. For transmission, we are going to use the Yaesu FT60. We're going to test UHF and VHF bands. Testing on two meters of one kilometer. Testing one two. Testing one two. Testing on 70 centimeters from one kilometer. Testing one two. Testing one two. Testing on two meters at one kilometer. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing the Quan Chang on two meters at one kilometer. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing the Bao Fang on two meters at one kilometer. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. So just kind of, um, as a summary statement on the both of these radios, um, there are some positives to the Quan Shang. Um, the screen display, the keypad layout, the tactile feel, the buttons. Um, you can't program it with Chirp and that's a problem. Uh, you have to use some goofy aftermarket, uh, and I'm sorry, that's not true. You have to use the software supplied by Quan Shang. Um, you have to install it on Windows. Uh, Chirp is multi-platform. I tend to use Linux. Uh, specifically Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi to program my radios with Chirp these days. And I find that to be very helpful, very handy. Um, we talked a little bit about aftermarket accessories. There's many more for the Baofeng than there are for the Quan Shang. <clears throat> the build quality on this is a little bit uh, suspect, a little bit below the mark. Not that the build quality on the Baofeng is stellar by any means. Uh, I just find it to be a little bit better. And given that these are both uh, in the same price range and what I call compromise radios, uh, I really just don't see the need to buy something like this unless you're a collector, unless you're an enthusiast, um, and then you can put up with some of its shortcomings. But uh, I call these compromise radios, and the reason I do that is, is that you're, you're compromising quality and in some cases convenience um, for a cheaper radio. You could spend some more money and then you could get a, a radio that costs significantly more. This is about 150 bucks, so I mean, you're talking six of these. Um, and I understand why people would go with this route as opposed to this route. Um, but you're, you're making a compromise to get a more budget-friendly, a more value-priced uh, a radio, and then you can expect a compromise on build quality. And I talk about things like convenience, maybe the limitations to the programming software that you have with this, maybe the limitations to aftermarket accessories. Anyhow, that's really my rant on it. Um, I would pass on the Quan Shang. I'm not keeping this one.